Hello YouTube, this is Mechanoclaps. I just got done installing the humidificator <laughs> on the furnace. Um, it is model HE360A. Um, supposedly everything you need is in the box. Um, there's no pull ties in the box. <clears throat> it took me about six hours to uh, install this thing and I had to have my tin knocker buddy come over. Because this is the only spot on the plenum I had. It was big enough with enough clearance um, this duct right here was here that's why I had him come over because he can cut a seven inch hole in there that's round and mine would not be round so the vent that was in here to heat the basement went on the other side of the plenum. So Mama's Tootsie stay warm while she's doing the laundry. And that had to get rearranged a little bit. Okay, so you need a hole in the furnace. And What I was unable to find anywhere on the internet was what size the hole was going to need to be before I started. And it ends up being 14 inches. By 13 and about 3 years for this unit. My buddy that's a tin knocker told me to get this unit because the bypass type units take the air from here, blow it through the unit, and it goes back into the return air. Then the moisturized air goes through your combustion chamber and then back into the rest of the house. So you have all that moisture going through your combustion chamber and he says you don't want that if you can avoid it. So get this unit. And this unit takes air from inside the supply plenum. It gets ducted through the back of this thing into the fan and the fan blows over the fins which look like they're going to be good for uh, hard water I've worked on a few of these things in the past that had paper type filters paper type filters are horrible for hard water and then that just blows into the supply plenum there were a few clearance type issues to think about um, besides the dimensions I gave you you need about an inch and a half on top and about two and a half inches on the bottom Three inches would have been better. I had to reef the, the lines for the air conditioning a little out of the way to make it happen on this side because you can see I'm right tight up against the right edge. Well, maybe you can't see so good. 
And then underneath there's the solenoid valve, um, a wiring outlet with ins and outs. Um, the two red ones don't get used at all. The two yellow ones are just checking for continuity. There must be, uh, well, I know there's a, <coughs> a, excuse me, a doorbell transformer in there and there's probably a relay that uh, starts the transformer. The relay is triggered by continuity. You get that through, this is a switch. This is uh, checking for humidity in the return plenum. You can also put this up in the living room, but this is way easier. This is actually a hole cut in the return plenum, the size of the back of this thing. That's just surface mounted. It just screws on there. And that's checking for a differential between pressure, between the supply plenum and the return plenum. And when there's a differential, uh, there's plus and minus on there. When there's a differential, that switch will close. When you need humidity, this switch will close and that will complete the circuit. The solenoid valve will open and start dumping water down the front of the, um, the media. But what I realized immediately was um, when I, once I got this thing running is that um, the drain line that comes out of the bottom here that's supposed to be kind of a just in case overflow was getting filled rapidly with water and I was gonna have to pay for all that water it was a lot of water <laughs> I can't imagine what my heat bill or my water bill would have been next month um, the research that I did before I start, started installing it, after I purchased it, was that there would be um, a similar unit that has a little water sensor in the bottom, and that would probably just be, you know, uh, detecting voltage across two electrodes. And then, um, if any water would be in the bottom, then that would stop the solenoid also, and that would probably save you. But that unit is not available at the Monardos, and uh, this one is. So this is the one I got, and I don't know, that thing probably cost me like $800 from a supplier. This thing was like, uh, today, $177 after 11% mail-in rebate at Menardo's. And uh, what did I need to get that wasn't with it? Um, all the pull ties. Got those at work. This drain line. Um, because of the hard water I have, I'm probably going to have to replace that. So I used the one that came with it, but I wish I would have gotten a different one. This is PEX line. Um, it seems to be adequate. And there's the saddle valve. And that's what I'm going to use to save myself a lot of money. Um, I ran the furnace for two or three cycles. And there was a lot of water coming down the condensate line or the, the drain line here. And uh, I didn't want to pay for all that water. So what I did is I went up to that valve and I closed it completely. And I started making just like eighth turns until I seen water coming out of the drain line. And then I backed it off a quarter turn. So the, the filter media that's in there um, is probably going to become more efficient as the hard water deposits come on it. Uh, there's going to be a lot more surface for the water to attach to and it's going to take a longer amount of time for the water to come from the top of the media to the bottom of the media. But I kind of want to starve the system 
I am pretty sure that the blower that's in here, the, the little pan motor, you could run that for like a hundred years <laughs> for like almost no nothing on the electric bill. But that valve there, wide open, could cost you a hundred dollars a month on your electric bill or water bill easily. So I'm gonna starve this thing of water a little bit and uh, hopefully no water will ever go down the drain here. That's the plan anyway. Um, I'll update in about ooh, probably eight weeks of what actually happened. I'm sure that if you're looking at YouTube videos about uh, installing these things, you're probably noticing that there's wires strung all over everywhere. That's not absolutely necessary. I got the switch right there. The tap on the plenum for the return plenum is six inches away. It goes right to the thing. The supply plenum is about 12 inches away. 18 inches of tubing goes up to the, to the switch. The switch open and closes. This is surface mount. This goes right into the plenum because as air is drawn from the rest of the house, it'll get a good sampling of what the moisture level is in the rest of the house. And you have to tweak this, what my sister says, a couple times a year. Um, I'm probably very, very high right now. All the wood in my house and all the cloth in my house is very, very dry right now. So I want to like get all that to the right level. I have a uh, whatever the little meter is that checks the humidity level in the rest of the house is upstairs next to the TV so I can keep a close eye on it and over the next couple days and eventually I'll just draw right on here with a sharpie what the correct levels are for the different times of year. Um, I'm in Wisconsin it's gonna be 10 below here before long at all and this thing has the ability to easily frost over every window in the house and you know I'm okay with that as long as it's comfortable but apparently some of these units have the ability to make sure that the humidity stays at a low enough level that that the um, watering and icing won't happen on the windows I'd much rather be comfortable. Uh, we used to have a Honeywell standalone unit that sat in the living room and that thing we put sometimes 20 gallons of water a day in that thing and it was just a pain in the ass. <laughs> and the filter because of the hard water it was a wicking system so the the water was down in the bottom and the, it would like wick up through the filter and then the fan would blow over the filter and blow it around the house. The water that we have caused that filter to, it was efficient for about a month. After two months, it wouldn't even get the house to the level of humidity it needs to be at. So I have no doubt that this is going to last probably the life of the furnace and I'm never gonna have to add water to it manually. I'm probably going to have to um, replace the media at least once a year. Um, it's $8.99 or something for the media. It could be that I'd have to do it once a month when I change the other filter, which is $2.50, this one's eight ninety nine, dollars And then apparently the solenoid valve that's up underneath here is the, the failure mode. And this will fail open. And then water will go down the drain even when the furnace isn't running. This would be stuck open and hard water is gonna cause that. So I'm gonna to have to keep an eye on that. If I see any water in the drain line, when the unit's not running, 
then I know that I need a new solenoid valve and it's like a $8 part. <clears throat> it's not a big deal to change it. Two screws up underneath there. I don't know if there's any such thing that can um, withstand the water that we have around here. It's just horribly hard water. And like I said, the tubing should have been replaced already, but it's going to need to be replaced soon enough. The key here is to starve it of water. And the valve itself is probably going to get deposits in it and require some sort of an adjustment because of... Uh, right now you can see there's two bubbles still in the line. They're not moving right now. Um, and that's a good thing. You don't want them moving. And that would be a good way to be able to detect if there ever was a leak passed on this valve. Um, to get those up there, you would just crack this open until some air gets in. And just drain some water out of there and air will definitely get in. And it'll find its way back up to the valve. You might have to tap it, wiggle it. Sneak the air back up there until you have the bubbles and you can see if the bubbles are moving or not. Okay, first YouTube video. I think I covered everything. You guys have a good life.